and yes, yeah, so, as a little bit of an introduction about myself. Yeah, I've been, uh, I'm a big scientist, but also I'm consultant in credit risk. And I'm really excited for today to work here and uh, to be part of the Data Science Festival's webinar. Um, and today I'm going to be talking about uh, a, side, a side project that I have worked uh, uh, for the last kind of year. Um, and in this project in specific, I combine my skills in data science, uh, also my skills about uh, public speaking. So you might be wondering right now how public speaking uh, is combined with uh, data, how data science is combined with public speaking. Well, probably you have seen a similar picture to this one that I'm sharing right now. And this in some way, uh, the skills that free data scientists should have and as you can see right now in here we have all the technical side on the top uh, we have all the programming ones uh, also in there and also right then below we have another sub skills that we normally we normally talk about and as a, as a data scientist i normally um, quite uh, enjoy learning all of these the latest machine learning programming i also enjoy a lot learning all of the latest programming software already available. But sometimes we tend to forget one really important part that makes a data scientist. And this is about the communication side. I think uh, as, uh, it's a really important factor because we need to get all of those technical findings that we are getting from the data and to be able to present them and communicate them to every stakeholder and every person that they might be not as uh, technical as you. So I found that this is a really, this is a really uh, important skill to have. And this is basically my motivation of, of one of the, one of my motivations that I got into this side project that I work. Uh, my question and my objective is, it was to find what are the main components that makes a really good presentation? And why not to use my data science skills uh, to try to find any data available out there and find these patterns. But before I start uh, with the presentation, I want to get to know a little bit more about you. And in this case, I want to know what is your background? Like one, uh, what is your motivation about? So yeah, uh, in here you have a quick poll. I want to know uh, in, in general, how experienced you are of in text analytics and in machine learning. So you should have uh, a poll right now uh, that will that will um, that will that will be sharing now in the screen. Uh, as a background, uh, the project is is based on text analytics and machine learning. And in in this case, for, for me, it was quite of my my first big uh, my first project working with text analytics, uh, but from the side of the machine learning. Um, uh, from my background in credit risk and in data analytics consulting, uh, I have been quite experienced more on the side of machine learning. So this time it was a really good opportunity to mix both of them. So now let's see the results. Perfect. So we have like around uh, only 10% of the people have a background with text analytics and mostly in machine learning. Uh, many of you have 30% has uh, have both. So. Uh, that I will I will be explaining a little bit more about the text analytics side, and I'm gonna be uh, uh, going over the machine learning a little bit more uh, faster. So yeah, let's start now with the with the presentation. Uh, let me close this one. Perfect. Perfect. So I have been always really impressed by people that are really good communicators, and I feel that. They have a really important um, a skill to, because they can stand in front of, the, of, of a multitude of people, they can deliver a really good speech, and they can create an impact with the speech that they say. And I'm quite impressed because they feel all the time really, really reassured, and they have, they have all of this confidence all about themselves, which for me right now, uh, I'm getting quite nervous just by speaking in front of a computer. But from this, uh, I think probably you, you, you are very familiar with what you can see in here in the screen. It's the, it's the script from uh, three of one of the, my three favorite speeches. And I wonder if you can identify the speakers that I'm talking about. 
they, they have been quite famous. They're quite famous people. Um, probably you already know what I'm talking about. So yeah, I'm talking about uh, John F. Kennedy, Martin Luther King, and Winston Churchill. And for sure, they are really, really famous speakers. And I think their speeches right now are considered as the most important ones. And also they are considered as the most important public speakers. And I feel, I feel that they, they, have, uh, they have the charisma also to, to connect with people and to create change. And my data science background was telling me that probably they have, they use similar styles, they use similar skills and similar traits to deliver a good speech. So in this project first, I was thinking, okay, what are the similarities between these three last speeches that we saw? So yeah, I took my, my basics of, of uh, text analytics and I started just to get the transcript from all of these three speeches and basically trying to create this workload just to see what is behind the data behind the, the, the speeches. And quite interestingly, I found that the most used words across these three speeches was basically the same. And as you are familiar probably with uh, text analytics uh, and these workloads, the bigger the size of the word, uh, the, it means that it was more frequent. So you can see right there in the middle what could be the most used word. So I'm gonna give you a help. Is the word will? Well, in this case for Winston Churchill to the very right side, it, he used the word shall, but you know, it's more of the British style. Uh, but that in some way tells me like, probably there is some way that speakers can share similar style and similar patterns deliver a good speech. And also by taking a look also at the structure of these three different speeches, I found that they are a similar way to say things. So they use a structural repetition, which basically they were repeating the same phrase many times across the speech. That's another another uh, similar style and similar trait that they use for their speech. So now, my, my, right now, with three speeches, as a data scientist, we cannot make strong conclusions, right? So that, that was it. I wanted to try to find a way that I can capture the patterns on, on a more bigger data set. So basically, I needed more data. More data because I wanted to find somewhere that I can find enough talks to make conclusions. And ideally, also the same format and style to avoid any bias on the, on the, on the delivery. And also to make it easier for me to find the transcripts right there to make it to make it easy to analyze the text. And also, most important importantly for a machine learning model, a way that I can say the, and track the progress of popularity or to differentiate the good speeches with the bad speeches. So yeah, that was the mission that I got to. Okay, where can I find this data set? And it didn't take that much to find something that you already been familiar with. And this is something that uh, I think by itself, the nature of these speeches are to be inspiring. And also, they also share the same format, which was really good. Now, I know that tech talks are out there. There are not normally videos about it. So I know that the website is there. So how can I get all of that information? How can I get all the information about the transcripts, the views, the, the dates, uh, the, the speakers, because I could just write uh, a, big, uh, uh, a big code to start to scrap this data from the internet. But before that, I think someone made me a huge favor and did already all of that. So yeah, I found a data set in Kaggle, which had all, all the data from all of the, the tech talks. And it has a lot of information, not just from the, from the transcripts itself, but also additional information that it will be, it was really beneficial for this project. So what I'm gonna go through is how I took all of these data and then analyze it with machine learning to find what is the most relevant traits and patterns that makes a good pitch. So I'm using right now, I'm gonna be using right now the, the, the data science approach, which basically means getting all the data and create features putting it all together to develop models. And finally, 
use those models to, to come up with, uh, with findings and, and insights. So let's start with the data extraction and feature engineering. First of all, if you are familiar with, uh, with Tech Talk, what you will find is that you will normally see this screen, but right there, there is a lot of data you can see. So you have all the transcripts, you have all the duration of the speech, you have the release date, uh, the factors, the, well, the number of, of views, that is, that is gonna be the main objective of this analysis. We can differentiate with this, which ones were really important or really relevant uh, tech talk, which the ones that they were not that relevant. And all of this information was already in this, in this data set that I mentioned about. And the, the good thing about it is that there was a lot of data. We were talking, we are talking about more than 2,500 tech talks from all the tech talks events uh, from, that are available. So that was a really, really good and big data set. And now uh, the, the next point is, well, I didn't know that much about the, the text analytics. So I found a really, really good source that I recommend to everyone that is, uh, this source is based on, 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 on R. What I found, I has a really good description of how to use data, uh, how to use text and transcript to, to basically to go from unstructured data to unstructured data sets and analyze and create, uh, and create um, a, a analyze the text up behind it. What you can see here is just a, a really brief uh, map of what is, uh, what is to be, um, the, the journey that makes you to go from text to visualization of data, uh, of this data. Uh, but for more reference, the website that I'm, I'm putting in here is, is, is just basically a really good source for it. And that's where I learned all the approaches. So now about the data itself, uh, I'm, as I mentioned, it was 2,500 TED Talks. Uh, all the trans were available and there were a lot of uh, data set already there, uh, a lot of additional features on top of the, of the text that will be really beneficial for this analysis. And, but also I need to find, to create features. So in this case, I analyzed and created a lot of features like the number of sentences that they were saying, the words per minute, the average words that they were using per sentence, and also there were some rich uh, reactions from the public in this data set. So there were uh, comments that when the people laugh, when the people uh, got questions and when the people applaud. And then from here also, I did all of the features of building engrams, which basically means frequency of words or, or many words at the same time. So you can analyze how many, how many times they say a specific combination of words uh, from doing the speech. So with all of these features, now the main goal was to say, okay, once uh, someone, once someone has given a speech, now that I have all that data, how can how can I use that data to see if the tech talk will be uh, popular or not? So that basically means build a machine learning model based on the text analytics to predict if the to predict if the tech talk will be successful or not. So yeah, right now, now with all of this data set, what I did is start with analyzing on a really descriptive way how this uh, data set, like how this data set uh, uh, is, is uh, constructed. So the first step was to do a lot of descriptive analytics, which basically means uh, just making sure that the data makes sense to make sure that you have all the features are, uh, are have, have data in itself, that there is not just a constant, for example, in there. And one of the important things that I also did is that uh, many of the tech talks, uh, they were available for a long time, let's say uh, three, four, five years. So in that way, that those tech talks could potentially have more views than something that is uh, released uh, like recently. So I, what I did is standardize the number of views uh, times the, the, uh, by the time that they have been available on the website just to get a really good comparison between all of the, all of the, the, the tech talks across uh, the 2,500 tech talks. 
for this point, I use a lot of the R libraries that uh, I did in this analysis, like tidyverse for data transformations. And I mentioned also the tidy text that is also really good for, uh, that is the main one to use the text analytics and additional ones to help me with the descriptive analysis. Now, the second, the second step was to remove variables that I don't need it. And in this case, uh, with basic uh, correlation analysis, I can remove all of it that it doesn't add that much value uh, to, to what I'm trying to predict, that, that it was in this case, trying to find the, the pattern of what makes, uh, what are the most important, what are the most used tech talks. Also, I did after all of this uh, analysis. I also analyzed what were the most important features in this, in this, uh, in the in the data set itself. So, for example, I started to combine uh, combine engrams that that were relevant. For example, uh, there was uh, engram that is uh, constructed with the word uh, you, "you are going," and this engram it could be same as used as if you are using uh, you are as the engram are going to. So in those ways, I'm just trying to combine uh, engrams that make sense. Uh, and this is just to try to encourage more features that potentially could be important for, for the machine learning model that, I'm, that I will be that I'm using. So this is just about trying to make a sense of the engrams already constructed that linguistically makes sense to, to have. And finally, and this is where all the machine learning comes, to develop the models. And in this case, for, for me, what I like using is going from simple models to complex models. So in this case, having, uh, for me, my, given my credit risk background, uh, normally, like we start with uh, simple regression models, uh, start making sense of, of, the, of, the, of the data to analyze which ones are the uh, important factors on a really individual basis. And then from there, starting to make sense of the data, if that makes, if that makes sense that, that that factor could be potential or not to use. And also really important, once you are starting to analyze these factors individually, then when you start combining them all together, also to find and to make sure that uh, the final models also are, are making sense and in, in terms that you are adding just the relevant information without overfitting the model. And in this case, I use uh, different techniques so as I mentioned, I started with the linear regression models, but then I use now more uh, more complex uh, models like random forest and also XGBoost. And one one library that also I quite like and I, I, I used to, to help me with the machine learning part, it was from the H2O library, because this H2O basically can take the data and then just produce a lot of, a lot of different models that uh, to analyze how they will perform with different, with different parameters itself. So that also helped me to get a really good reference that what I was doing individually and manually with the uh, relation random forest and XGBoost that all of these ones were also making sense. So yeah, I started, I put a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, models in there. And this is just a, a quick explanation of uh, what is what it was already um, what all the models that it was and in this case what I did it was uh, to plot them in here given the the importance uh, the variable variable importance and as you can see in here uh, you have uh, that the stack models the ones the models that are combined automatically by by H two O they were quite quite powerful but I also put a lot of effort on developing a really good uh, manual uh, logistic regression that you can see in here in the, in, that it was quite well ranked. So I developed uh, this manual like really tuning ranges, really tuning the, the algorithm and, and the factors that were coming in. And it was also really good, really good performance after, after, after spending some really good time on this model. And overall, the rest of the models that H2O uh, was giving, some of them were really performing really well, but some of them, they were not performing as well. It's just, it just about the parameters that they were uh, putting in there. And obviously here you can see also my, my default parameters on my XGBoost and random forest were not performing as well. So yeah, definitely I require more tuning than just using the random settings of uh, random had the parameters of those references. So this is about the model trying to get, uh, uh, trying to see how powerful can be a model that just use text to predict 
how a uh, sector will, if the sector will be relevant or not. So what about what I learned from here from all of these models? I needed to pick uh, one model. So in this case, I chose the, the logistic ratio model because it's the one that I tune a lot and also the one that I understand really well with the with uh, and that I can be really interpretable uh, from uh, to make to to start exploring more the the predictions. And it was a good model in general. It was 70%, 73% of the time, it was predicting correctly, just based on the text of the text of if the text will be popular or not. So I consider that, that was a good, a good outcome. But more important for me, and this is the, the part that I find uh, relevant to, uh, from, and the, the main insights from this model, it was to understand what were those factors that were creating uh, that really good tech talk. So what were those factors? First of all, what it, what it found is that the tech talks that are shorter in shorter time by nature, they, they tend to be more effective. So basically, if you try to summarize uh, something that you're gonna say, and then you deliver it in the shortest time possible, it's just gonna be better for if you are uh, if you if you're planning to be do, to do a tech talk. And I think this one it just can be extrapolated to every presentation. Like if you try if you aim to summarize everything that, that you need to do in the shortest time possible, then it will be beneficial for your audience because you don't spend you won't spend that much of, of their time trying to go through the material that you need to cover. Uh, the second point it was also to speak slowly. And I think this is something that I tend to focus quite a lot in my, in my presentation because by nature, from my side, I tend to speak fast. So every time that I even see this point, I try to speak slowly. So yeah, speak slowly in every presentation and then you're gonna make a better, a better, uh, a better in, in impact in your presentation. And I think also it's because you give more time to your audience to catch and to grasp what you are saying. So now the third factor that I also found uh, important is to ask questions. And in this case, uh, one of the things uh, that it was found is that it's, it's not directly to ask the questions to the audience, uh, but how they frame the, how, how they frame their, their, their presentation to incorporate questions, to, to try to, to get the audience to think about what the, what the, the presenter is saying. So for example, as uh, I have seen in my slides, I'm asking what are the most important factors? So I'm, I'm phrasing something as a question. So that's something that, that is, is beneficial for a, for a tech talk and in general for any presentation. The fourth uh, most important factor was to make your audience laugh. And I think this is just, because if you use humor, then in some ways you are uh, you are creating you are not you are encouraging to, to your audience to make it more interactive to make it more enjoyable, and and the way that I it was detected by the model it was because in all of the transcript it was saying uh, the word laugh when when the people were laughing at something on the text talk so the ones that were having more of this uh, laugh. They were. They tend to be more uh, better, better uh, with better uh, views, with more views than, than the other ones. So really important for any of your presentations. Try to make your audience laugh or make it make it fun. And finally, uh, another factor it was found, and this is also from from the text analytics itself. It was to make it simple. Uh, it was found that the less words they were using per sentence, in it, it was generally better. So what I get from here is that. Don't try to uh, make really complex uh, language. Don't try to use many uh, like really complex language. Try to make it simple. Try to use uh, uh, simple words to make uh, more engaging and more with better impact all your presentations. So yeah, now with this model, what I did is was well, let's try to explore uh, with the tech with all the tech talks, tech talks that are available. Let's try to see and uh, let's try to uh, score them. One and once with this score, I will be. I was checking manually and watching the different tech talks to see how I perceive them. So yeah, I took the ones that the model was saying that it was really low, and I, I sit to the pain to see that they were actually not that good. So one of the 
talks that that found uh, that the the model found that to be what the, the low with the lowest score it was uh, this one from Ethan Zuckerman and when I watched this uh, tech talk the it was it was it, it was having everything that the model was saying not to do because he was going really it was a he was a he was speaking really fast he wasn't used humor at all and also uh, he was he was not, not asking questions. So that I think that after watching this, I got the meaning of how not to to perf how not to do a tech talk uh, or how not to deliver a tech talk just by by the way that you are engaging with your audience. Also, another bad example. It was uh, interesting, you know, from from the guys from Google. In this case, um, in this presentation, uh, the presentation itself it was it was like more like a uh, like a, it was really plain, uh, sim similar to the previous one. No, no questions at all. Really rushed, and we not that many, not that much humor. And funny enough, also one from uh, the Amazon uh, CEO, it was on that same way. So the model was saying that these ones are not that really good tech talks. When by watching them, I verified that it wasn't the case. But on the other side, the ones that were really good ones, it was uh, one from Stephen Hawking, and. I think in this case, when I verify, when I watch it, I verify that one of the important parts from this uh, from this uh, presentation is that by itself, the, the artificial voice that, that Stephen Hawking uses is quite slow. So that gives quite a good pace on the way that he delivers the, the talk. And also because as you can see from the title, he was asking many questions. So in, in that case, he was also scoring a lot of points just by asking everything and phrasing everything as a question to keep the audience engaged so that was a, a a good a good combination of two factors that make the the this tech talk really really important and finally some of the some one that i found really interesting also from my from my background in statistics that in some way can tell me that i have a future if i give a tech talk is about uh, a tech talk from alan smith that why you should love statistics. And in this case, when I watch this tech talk, what I can say is that he uses all the traits from, from, the, from the model that uh, he was asking a lot of questions, using a lot of humor. He has a really uh, short tech talk of just 12 minutes. And also uh, that this combination of factors made a really an enjoy enjoyable tech talk. And I recommend you to watch this one because in general, I feel that it's, these are really good example of how to present something to an audience. And in general, when you are talking about something really technical, how can you deliver that technical to a general audience? So I really recommend this tech talk to watch for everyone. So now with all of these models, what I wanted to, to put also is to not just leave it as a machine learning model and, and leave it there, but also I want to develop a platform that everyone can use it to also to uh, test and to check uh, if they are gonna present something to see if, if it's in a good shape uh, and if it, if it has those traits that I have, I have been mentioning. So for this case, I put a, a shiny app. I put the, I put the, the, the framework of, uh, of getting the, the text. Once you have written the text, then it can give you the score of these machine learning models, but also it can recommend you which are the most important factors that you should be focusing to improve it. So if you go to the website, then there is a, a link to this um, to this tool, and it's, it's completely free. Uh, yeah, I don't collect any data at all. It's just more for the for the for the sharing of of the uh, of how to make a better speech or in general a better talk. And the, the way that I developed this one, it was with, uh, now that I have all my model in R, uh, how uh, I use it R and, and Shiny, and also the Shiny apps, it was, since it's, it's free, it, it was really, really beneficial to, to put everything on a Shiny dashboard. And it was quite, I feel that it was quite straightforward to port everything that I had already done into this platform and, and to productionalize all of these machine learning models that I developed. So how can you use it? It's quite straightforward. You can just uh, write a transcript of what you're trying to say. Uh, once you have, you, you have it there, you can just put it in the online tool and then you press uh, 
calculate the insights, and then it will give you that recommendation. So basically you can tune it from here, and then basically the next step is just basically rehearse your speech, and you are ready to present it. So what I want, I want to finish now with this uh, presentation uh, with some conclusions that I got from here that I feel that I learned a lot about text analytics with this uh, site project that I did. And I use my predictive modeling skills that I have gained through my uh, uh, work experience uh, to finally show what were the, those inspirational factors that makes a really good talk. And in general, how can I, uh, with these factors, how can I improve my, also my, my presentation uh, style? What I also found is that the, uh, in general, the ecosystem from R was really, really easy to use. Uh, from the data transformation itself, from the modeling, and ultimately to port everything into uh, a deployment uh, with uh, online with Shiny and Shiny App. So it was quite straightforward. And given that my background is not in, in, in computer science, I feel that was, uh, everything was quite straightforward. So it was easy for, for uh, to deploy. Uh, but finally also, that I learned that if we, uh, communication is, is really important for every data scientist, uh, with these traits, uh, it can help me to develop better presentations and also to bring, uh, enjoy, uh, to in for everyone, to make everyone enjoy my presentations that I'm giving. So hopefully you have enjoyed also this presentation. And uh, now this is all for me. So I'm gonna go back now to David, if he's back or Amy, uh, to take uh, some questions. I'm back. I'm back. I'm really sorry about that. Hey, it's typical. Hey, it's been internet's been fine for months, and then that happens just as uh, just as we go live. So, uh, Eduardo, f first and foremost, thank you uh, very much. Really, really enjoyed that. Uh, it was a great talk. Uh, I think my first question is: obviously, you, you must have run your presentation through the app. What what score did it give you? Yeah, I, I what I found is that I, I wasn't using too many questions, so that's why I try to put questions in every slide, and that basically improve my, 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 my score. So that was a really good one. And also try to use yeah. Steamer and try to make it enjoyable, yeah. Mate, it worked. You did very well. Perfect, perfect. Uh, if I'm honest, I, I could probably have done with the app when you know, I've done a couple of best man speeches and stuff like that. So uh, I should have probably run those through and practiced a bit more, but uh, yeah, it's all good stuff. Uh, we're gonna jump into the questions. Uh, we, we've got, I think six or seven already, which is, which is great to see. So we'll, we'll run through them. Um, so sometimes when we ask a question, it does jump around a little bit. We're, we'll just do our best to fire through as many as possible. Um, if, if you're looking and reading along at the same time, actually, Eduardo, if you click on the Answered tab, uh, although it says Answered, we've just moved them across there so that people can see them uh, and read along with us. So the first question is from Harrison Pickard. Um, it's a bit of a curveball, if I'm honest, straight in. Uh, but he was asking, uh, did, did you think about, in terms of the, the view count, uh, any external factors like the pre-existing popularity of the speaker uh, or additional marketing and stuff like that? But I guess that was quite interesting to see with Jeff Bezos and the guys from Google, actually, as well. So, yeah, I, I mean, over to you. How, how did you uh, factor for that? Yeah, yeah. one of the things uh, that I found also, uh, like, how can I factor and try to remove bias uh, for example, if the uh, potential that uh, um, uh, the popularity of a, a man is more uh, appealing for a tech for a tech or than women, so all of these factors, I, I've tried to to make uh, the model to just count for the text uh, and try to remove everything else that it was related to the speaker itself. But yeah, it's it's quite difficult to standardize and to I think once we have this model, then we uh, a next step will be okay. Try to to, to subtract some points to the, the ones that are, are male and are really popular. Uh, if, if that makes, if that, that was the factor that was important for, uh, for being popular. But yeah, I think then the next step we will try to, to build a model that is remove those biases on top of this one. That's an interesting point. It's, you'd like to think there isn't bias in that area, but you know, I'm sure you could prove it with the data one way or another, couldn't you? So yeah. that's, a, that's a whole other project, I'm guessing. So yeah. uh, we, we actually had um, a lady called Sonia giving a talk last week. It's a little bit different for us. It wasn't as technical, but she was talking about building a presence and, you know, building your profile and stuff like that. Um, and it was really interesting for you to, I think it'd probably be in terms of our audience, much more appealing because you've jumped straight into the data and, and really 
built some facts around what makes it popular rather than just sort of an opinion and stuff like that. So uh, yeah. it was good, good to see. Um, we'll jump on to the next question from uh, Thomas Richardson. Uh, he says, sorry if I missed this, uh, but what was your response variable for the lo logistic regression? Yeah, uh, it was uh, if the uh, tech talk would be popular or not. So basically it was a zero to one. And I basically did a threshold. Okay, if it's, if it's within the 50% of uh, higher counts, then that would be a popular. If it's uh, below the 50% of non-popular, that would be a zero. So it's just uh, that part of... Uh, and I'm counting the, the views when they are standardized. So standardized by the time that they have been available. So that will try to remove the bias of long, of, uh, long available tech talks to be more viewed uh, and trying to standardize that one by, by the time that they have been available. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, next question from Adam. Uh, what other factors can make the model that you've built uh, more predictive? Uh, yeah, that's that's a really good question. That I I, I would like to, to experiment more uh, more with the with the audio of the of the tech talks, because I feel that that probably the in 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 the audio itself we can get some features that could be important, like the the moment, moments of silence, like if the speaker gave a little bit more of of um, uh, kind of uh, volume or kind of something that kind of make uh, a, a tech talk more uh, impactful with more uh, remembrance. So I think with, even with the videos or with, even with the audio, I think there could be uh, features that we can extract from there. But obviously, as uh, it's, it's audio and video, it, the, the, the engineering of those ones is going to be more challenging. And also to scrap that data is also daunting in some way. Fantastic. Thank you. It's one of the side projects, I think, that could just keep going and going as well. So uh, it'll keep, keep you busy <laughs> for sure. Um, next question was from Ayudua. Um I think you've probably just answered that actually in your last, uh, last point there, but I'll just to double check. Uh, how did you quantify your model binary classifier output, i.e. Yeah. good talk one and bad talk zero? Uh, yeah. uh, was it based on threshold applied? So nothing more to add really there, eh? Yeah. Perfect. Uh, Dave Mason is asking, um, did you include the general subject area of the talk as a factor? Yeah, that, that's also from the thing. Uh, what I was trying to get from, what I was trying, the aim from my mod, uh, model was just based on the words, but uh, definitely on, the, on that data set uh, that, that I mentioned in, in the slides, uh, you can find the, the information about like the gender, the, well, the uh, gender of the person, the topic of the person, if the person was to speak with someone else, if the, so it, it was, a, there is a lot of other factors that you can include, well, from my purpose of just trying to, uh, to get the factors that I can use from my presentations, I'm just included them, the ones that I can affect or the, can, the ones that I can uh, use from my side to, to make it more engaging. I mean, I'm guessing there, there'll be trends over time as well as with the topics and stuff like that when there think things come and come and go. So yeah. uh, good question there, Dave. Um, question from uh, Manny, uh, good to see you. Um, I really liked your presentation and content. Um, I had to, if I had to use your work as a Python developer, uh, how could I re re reuse your R framework or even the R libraries that you've used? Yeah, yeah, from, uh, from the website that I put, uh, uh, I have also, uh, the, the slides available and also from, from this video will be available. Uh, so I put uh, all the, the text, the, sorry, the, the, the libraries that I use, the, the data set, the source of the data set. So basically, yeah, that it has all the, the, the raw materials to start building the, the building blocks from, from, from it. And if, yeah, if there is any other question, yeah, uh, you can uh, address, you can find me in LinkedIn or in, in, in Twitter and just ask me any question that you will be interested to know. Uh, Eduardo, that's a brave move. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next question we have is from Joe. Um, and again, it's talking about external factors. So it, it may be something you can factor for, it might be something that you can't. But he was asking, um, how do you account for external factors? For example, if there was a breaking news event about one of the speakers, uh, which might cause a spike or something like that. Is there anything yeah. you can do or do you just ignore that? Yeah, I, I yeah I ignore that one, but I think yeah, with from all of these uh, the questions that yeah they are mentioning, I think uh, what I feel is now like kind of I put the challenge to everyone else now out there that the data set has all of these features that 
now we can build a model to say if there were biases in gender, that if the, if the model of, or let's say if a topic was in a specific important uh, at that time. So yeah, I think what I like from, from, from the data science community in general, that the challenge is there, the data set is there. And yeah, I think uh, I will be looking for, for, for the next data science festival if someone produces something similar on that side, yeah. I like that, bit of teamwork maybe. Even. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Uh, we'll shoot on then to the question from uh, John Ashdown. Uh, I didn't know that actually, but he was saying that TED offer training to the speakers uh, do you think this can affect the data set? Oh yeah, I think uh, what, uh, like one of the things that I were saying like, okay, now that everyone knows the main, main insights, so now everyone is gonna use it and then probably can buy us the, the next set of model. So yeah, definitely, but hopefully everyone is using this one to produce better presentations, which uh, then uh, hopefully the model, a future model of itself will, will be more tailored and it will be trying to find more, more factors in addition to the ones that I have said. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, really interesting question now from uh, Robert Whiteley. Um, he's asking, does the model output a bell curve for each of the metrics? For example, is there an optimum sentence length? Not too long, not too short. Uh, yeah, the, uh, well, the, uh, it's something that I want to put uh, in, in, the, in the tool. That's something that also have, uh, have been requested, like uh, not just the model, but the, the specific metrics itself. Uh, like for example, the ex exact words per minute that you are saying. The, the, right now the tool uh, produces uh, sentiment analysis. So it, it produces uh, right now like uh, the distribution of words and how, how, uh, how positive or negative was, was the, your speech. But this factor doesn't influence at the moment the model. Uh, but I think it's something that I want to put more because uh, once, uh, uh, all of these tools I'm, I'm putting out there for pe to make to help people to to learn how to improve and um, yeah I think it's something a really really good measure to 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 make it uh, available for everyone that they probably need to speak a little bit slower or faster than this that is specific threshold. I think the scary future is we'll have a uh, open AI writing the talks for us using your model yeah. to get the right <laughs> amount of content and uh, it'll be perfect. We won't have to actually do anything. So uh, there you go. Um, cool, next question uh, from Hian Lee. Um, how did you come up with the feature labels to determine what made a good speech? The feature, uh, so, this, so in, in case, uh, the, these five ones that I mentioned is the, most, the five most important from the logistic regression model based on the, on the, on the wall, well, the, chi square uh, wall test. So these are the ones that are come as more predictive. Uh, there were additional more features, but this just is a top five. Uh, the, other, the, other, the other features were mostly related to a specific um, uh, combination of words. What it found also, uh, in addition to, to the ones that I mentioned, for example, was that if you repeat, if you create a lot of repetition in your words, if you use one word a lot, uh, it, it starts to undermine the score. So it just basically try to use a variety in your word style and don't try to just say one word too many times because otherwise it's just gonna, it's just gonna draw the attention from, from, from your speech. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, next question was from Krishna. Um, I, I'm aware we're, we're peppering you with questions actually. This is what happens on our Lunch and Learn. So uh, ho hopefully it's okay. You, you can have a rest this afternoon afterwards. So um, next question is from Krishna. Um, how can we take into account the speech modulation along with text? Uh, yeah, that's, that's something I think for that one, I think we need the audio because uh, with the audio, you can kind of find the, the pitch of, of how, how that flows. Uh, how the, the speech flows. But yeah, the challenge that I find in right now is that how can I extract the audio from 2,500 texels? And then once you have that one, then you have an audio time, uh, an audio data set. So then from there will be to transform that one into features to create that modulation, which is a really good challenge. <laughs> <laughs> it, it sounds like a good challenge, that's for sure. <laughs> um, far, firing on, uh, Thomas Richardson. Again, Thomas is asking, uh, why did you classify talks into popular or not popular uh, in a binary way uh, rather than using the view count? Uh, does this throw the information? Does this throw information away? 
Uh, yeah, the, the reason mostly to develop the binary one, it was to give this uh, kind of scorecard view uh, that I, that let's say in my, in my risk uh, background, it always to find a score, like you score zero to 10. Uh, it can tell you, uh, as I did with these features, it can tell you which ones you need to improve on and how much, how, how much you need to improve to, to count for all of that, uh, for all of that importance. So I think it was mostly to make it easier to interpret the, the model outcome, because let's say if I use, uh, as, as mentioned, the, the, the norm rate itself of standardized views, then, then it doesn't give you a good reference if I'm a non-TED speaker to say, okay, I have a, a views of 3000, if it's good or is it bad? So I just better to make it easier and, and try to say, okay, you are potentially on a good threshold of a good TED speaker. Perfect. Makes sense. Um, Dylan suggesting more uh, more ideas for you uh, in terms of <laughs> keep working on this. Um, he was asking, uh, could you also uh, consider the visual style of the presented material, complicated, yeah. or simple, visually exciting, or plain, etc. Yeah, one of the things that I found from another tech talk it was that there was a tech talk about visual styles, and it was just basically showing how people were influenced about. The, the, the visual cues that they were using in the slides and, and how they were addressing it. And I feel uh, one thing that I would like to test in the specific, what that means going into the videos itself, is to test if they use uh, uh, visual, uh, visual aids, like if, for example, if they use slides or if they use uh, like uh, objects in there. But yeah, that means going into a machine learning algorithm that detects if they're using the slides uh, in their videos, this specific object, and that object recognition of 2,500 videos. I think it's also really challenging. I think so, <laughs> definitely. Um, Harry Wilkinson is asking, um, how did you go about standardizing the view count? Uh, I'd assume videos are quite popular when they're first uploaded, uh, but then get less views as time goes on. Yeah, uh, yeah. How did you standardize? Yeah, the, the good thing about the data set, it, it has that, it mentions when it was published online and, and the, the cut of the, date, the data set. So you have the, the, the time when they were published, when they extract the data and the number of views. So you have the time that has been available and then that time you can just use it uh, to divide the number of views. So you have a yearly view and um, a standardized set of uh, the views per year. Thank you, perfect. Uh, Hamad is asking, um, in terms of minimizing possible bias in the data and um, did you do anything uh, from that side of things yeah yeah i think i removed uh, some some tech talks that it was like they were they were like not tech talk styles and it was because they were going over an hour i think so i removed some tech talks that it was like basically quite outliers for the tech talk style mostly the tech talks they last around 18 minutes uh, so i kept I kept mostly of them, but I removed ones that they were just having a total different format or it was not, it could be not considered as a tech talk because I feel, I think there were even some of them that it was just two minutes or so. So I removed things that were clearly, it will be clearly uh, adding just bias to the format itself. Fantastic, fantastic. A uh, couple of questions left to get through and then I think that'll be us uh, ready to wrap things up. Uh, question from Giselle, um, what would be the deciding factors if it was a speech model? That decide if the speech is good or bad. Uh, uh, deciding factors. Uh, I think from from this side, uh, I will go uh, to the top to the top characteristics of the model, which is uh, yeah the humor, the questions, speaking slowly, and and the duration of the talk. I think that that was by itself the model was it, it has been uh, that's kind of the the most weight that it was giving. Uh, the one about the words, the, the words per minute, sorry, the, the complexity of words, uh, the number of words per sentence, it wasn't that much strong, but it was still relevant. But definitely the top four ones were, are the most important ones. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, we've got a final question here from Sarah. Um, probably a good question, because I probably do this quite a lot, actually. Um, did you find anything out about filler words, like um and are and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, that's something that I also wanted to test, but unfortunately, the, the transcript didn't have those feeling words. 
uh, and from uh, as I've been kind of uh, doing a lot of these public speaking workshops, that's something that always comes like something to remove. But unfortunately, I couldn't test that because it wasn't available there. And then that means that it needs to be added manually by doing all of this audio analysis, which is the one that is difficult. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Man, that was fantastic, Eduardo. I think we fired through 20, 21 questions there, which was probably a bit, bit intense for you. So um, right. just very quickly, I, I got cut off at the start, which is probably a blessing for most people, but uh, I'll give a quick update about November and then I'll loop back to you in literally 60 seconds. Um, as I was mentioning, in November, we're, we're working really hard at the moment on a number of different um, events for you guys. Uh, all of it is for free, um, including live coding workshops, uh, panel discussions, author interviews. Uh, we're planning uh, a couple of different social events, which we're aiming to do online, including a quiz night uh, and actually a film night as well. So we're, we're pushing the boundaries a little bit. Um, the team are working really, really hard on it. Um, and yeah, re really proud of what we're starting to put together. So uh, please do over the next couple of days, the next couple of weeks, just keep your eye out uh, in the newsletters on our social media and stuff like that. Um, there may be some restrictions on the number of people that can join some of these events, particularly for the COVID coding workshops and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, very much first, first come, first serve for, from that side of things. So uh, it'd be great to see you all there. Uh, and obviously if you can um, you know, spread the word, uh, it'd be much appreciated. Um, in terms of volunteering, uh, we are also looking for some people within the community to, to get involved as volunteers. Uh, during the festival month, uh, we're planning on uh, creating a Slack community, uh, which will allow the uh, community to engage online, particularly around different talks and topics and stuff like that. Um, and actually, it would be quite helpful if we had some volunteers to help moderate that, uh, perhaps moderating different channels and stuff like that. So uh, that project's been uh, led up by one of our chapter directors, Alessandro, um, he's a data scientist at uh, Direct Line Group. But if you are interested, uh, please do get in touch with me uh, or get in touch with Jess or Amy directly um, and be great to help out. I can see uh, Manny's already volunteered, which is much appreciated, mate. We will definitely take you up on that uh, and we're looking for some more people. So that'd be, that'd be great. Um, Eduardo, if I can just get you to uh, jump back on, man. Uh, just to kind of give you a, a final thanks. I mean, from my perspective, absolutely love that. Um, you can normally tell by the number of questions that come through, whether a talk was popular or not. Uh, so people seem to have definitely been in, in, engaged. So uh, many thanks for you. I, I particularly also like it, having known you for a number of years, coming to events and stuff like that, to now have you come and present at the festivals, a, a big plus for us. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah, it was, thanks so much for the opportunity. And really, definitely, I really enjoy also uh, sharing the, 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 the insight that I found and hopefully everyone can benefit and create better presentations from here. Perfect. Well, thanks very much, Eduardo. Thank you all for joining us and uh, we'll be back next week and see you then. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Cheers. Bye.